of woman she was. Oh, a, a true inspiration mm. to all. And I've got to say, you know, not only, as I said on the did she break the ceiling, she smashed through the glass ceiling, but it was everything about her. A great friend to me, great advisor. In what way? She'd pick up the phone and she'd um, Helen in the office. And so if somebody else stands to the phone, is that you, Helen? No, it's Joe. Well, I don't want you, I want Helen. Tell him I want dinner with him tonight. So I'd go along and say, you're doing a good job, lovey. But it was always the but. The end of it, rowdy. Throw one or two out, she said. Show me who's in charge. That's all you need to do. And just check what you're wearing. I like tradition. So she was brilliant. You know, everything about her, she was still there, she was still a great friend, still giving me advice, which was fantastic. You said she likes tradition, but she didn't like the wig. No, because she said, I have a good head of her, she said. That's why I wasn't wearing that wig, because I asked her about the wig. Oh, no, she said. Why well, we're on spot or sir on? She said, I've got good quality hair, she said. And that's I've got plenty is. of it, she said, so I'm not going to wear that wig. So it was quite funny, mm -hmm. you know. And thankfully, she took the decision not for us to wear the wig, so I'm forever grateful for that. Um, from Tiller Girl to top politician, how did she make that transition? Like everything. Uh, tragically, she got injured when she was a Tiller Girl and she took up politics. And she was unlucky and lucky. She was lucky to be selected for so many by-elections. And then finally she broke through at West Bromwich. But she'd been around the Labour Party. She was the Labour Party. She went on to the NEC at a time when it was quite strong between the left and the right, pulling backwards and forwards. Betty was in there doing that. She was also an MEP as well, at the same time as being an MP. She did everything. She was the party. And then suddenly she became deputy speaker. And then, as we know, in 1992, she decided to become speaker. And she was brought in, as I say, first woman speaker. She was brought in, welcomed by everybody. Absolutely fantastic in making history. And from there on, as we know, we went through the troubles of Ireland, yeah. the peace agreement. She saw the end of a major government to the beginning of a Blair government. You know, she went through it all. And people say, you know, there's always history. She was in the middle of making that history. She was from Yorkshire, though. Well, as I always <laughs> said to her, this is the white rose versus the red rose. Of course, the red rose always wins, uh -huh. but we were always united. The North always joins together when we need to. <laughs> yeah, when it that's comes where to it. was fantastic. Exactly. We can slag each other <laughs> off, but don't take us on. If oh, no. Oh, well, the South's at it. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> when did she start to step back? And, and you know, what was her uh, life like in later years? Like everything. She used to choose the moment in which to speak to the media. She could have been on the media constantly, mm. and she didn't do that. She waited for the most important time when she felt it was right to speak out. And that's what she did. Should she pick a moment, she'd ensure the Lord she will prepare that speech and deliver. And same with interviews. She didn't want to be constantly there, far from it. She wanted the major moments where she felt her advice would be helpful and a reminder of what we should be doing. Do you ever hear her voice when you're trying to keep them under control? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's that... Luke Lovey, it, it was always lovey, and I love that, you know, it's fantastic. It's that bit of Yorkshire, isn't it? You know, that Dewsbury girl meets Charlie Langshire lad, you know, it was fantastic. Mm. And, and it's the way that she used to say, you're doing a good job, it's always that butt that gets me. And, of course, when I'm in the chamber, I always think, you know, you look at all of them, I'm the 158, she was the 155th speaker, all that history before us. But who do I look back to? I'm going to tell you it's Betty. Yeah, now, uh, today, there's going to be um, quite a lot of people that want to say lovely things about her. Absolutely, we've got to have an hour of people paying what, their memories, and it will be their memories. There'll be laughter, there may be tears, but what we will be doing is united in all of our thoughts of holding this one. It was a national institution. We're all there for Betty. And Betty was a person of the people. That's why she wasn't Elizabeth. She knew what she was doing when she set off. I'm Betty, Betty Bruthroyd. Even though she came Baroness, she was still Betty to me. And that's how the public will remember her. And that's how the Chamber's going to remember her today. We're going to have some great stories of those people who were there. I came in and she was in the chair. And you think, oh, my word, who is this speaker? You know, she kept you in order by just looking at you. Mm -hmm. And she was that kind of feisty person. But she was generous with it. She was nice. She held good order, but she was good fun with it. So we'll hear all those great stories today. People be queuing up to tell about how they got either in trouble or worked with Betty to deliver a better chamber. And that's what she did. She kept really good on it. Will you be able to keep a dry eye? No, I've got to say, it, when I found out the night before on Sunday night, it was sad. 
and I've got to say, it upsetting. I knew she wasn't well. In fact, we just arranged for flowers to be sent because we thought she was coming home and we thought everything was well. And, you know, at that age, you know, at some point, we all got to depart. But we were told that she was getting better, she was going home, so we thought everything was right, and then suddenly got the phone call. And I've just got to say, it was sad to hear. And I will miss her. I'll miss the advice, because she was always there. She said, whenever you need me, just give me a ring. She's that kind of person. Okay. Always. Well, thank you for taking the time. I'm sorry if I upset you. So no, sorry, no, no, it's it's a, you no. Know, she's there, and we'll have a good day today. Fantastic. Remember. It's thank great you. to see you as always. Thanks for coming in.